The following program is video supplemental instruction. VSI is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu. Of the three states, a certain vector in the xy plane has an x component of 4 and a y component of 10. It is then rotated in the xy plane so its x component is doubled. Its new y component is about blank. Alright, so this is a whole lot of jargon, kind of confusing to read. I don't really know what's going on, so draw it out. Always a good place to start. So, on our, we have, on our axis, a vector in the xy plane, so we're not worried about the z dimension, just two dimensions, has an x component of 4 and a y component of 10. So, just so we can see what we're looking at, that's going to be one way of writing it would be 4i plus 10j. So all it's saying is we're going over four spots, we're going up ten, boom, there's our vector, okay? Now what they're doing is they're saying it is then rotating the xy plane so its x component is doubled, okay? And then they want to know the new y component. So they're rotating it about the, act, the origin, either this way or that way. Now, if the x component is doubled, they didn't say anything about a negative, so you can assume it's going to be 8 over here. 4 times 2 is 8. So, I'm going to assume it's rotating this way. Uh, theoretically, I guess you could have it where it's doubled down here, but they don't give you any negative numbers for y, and generally they make it, they don't try to make it hard on you. They're not going to intentionally try to make things more difficult. If there's a logical progression, this would make more sense than moving all the way down here, skipping past one, but regardless of any of that, all we're doing is doing this, and if we have the same vector, what we know is we have the same magnitude. They want to know the new, the new y component. So this is the first uh, equation. The next one that we're transforming it into is going to be 8i plus some value yj. So we're looking for that y value right there. That's our variable. Now, like I said, the one way of looking at this, or the one way of doing this problem, is recognizing that while the x and y's are changing, it's still the same vector. And a vector, if you're not doing anything to the vector, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, squaring, or anything like that, then the magnitude of that vector is not going to change, even if the direction is. That is something you can simply assume. So if the magnitude is not changing, all we have to do is figure out the magnitude of the original vector, and that would be a good starting spot for us. And we can use that to solve for the final answer. So, figure out the magnitude. If you have the x and y components, you have the two components that are perpendicular to one another. So all you have to use, do is use Pythagoras there. So we can say that uh, the magnitude of this vector is going to be basically square root 4 squared plus 10 squared. Okay. We know this side is 10, we know this side is 4, right triangle, solve for the magnitude. It's going to be about 10.77. Okay. Now this guy right here, it's another right triangle. Okay. This time the bottom is 8. We don't know what this is, so I'm going to redraw that down here. We know this side has to be 10.77 because it's the same vector. We know this side of the triangle is 8 because they told us uh, the original x component is doubled. What we're looking for is y. So, still a right triangle. Still just two x and y components that are perpendicular to one another. No reason to not use Pythagoras theorem again. So we can say that 10.77 squared is equal to 8 squared plus y squared. So in this case, what we're actually going to be doing is saying y is going to be equal to square root of 10.77 squared minus 8 squared, because we're going to subtract this over and then take the square root. So that is just going to end up giving you 7.21. And that's going to be your answer about 7.2 is the correct answer on this. So basically the trick in this problem, in my opinion, is the fact that it's written in a way that's intended to intimidate and confuse you. So Anytime that happens, just read through the problem so you understand what's going on, and then take it step by step. Take, you know, word by word, each part of the problem. Certain vector, you got an xy plane, they told you the two components, so we wrote those down, draw it out so we see what's going on. They told us 
x doubled to 8, so figure out some way, and they also told it is rotated. The key thing about rotating is you're going to rotate about a certain point, okay? So we knew it was going to rotate, there was no negative, so it wasn't going to rotate this way. It would be silly for it to really rotate all the way down there and past this point. Furthermore, there's no y negative values either, so... Anyway, uh, yeah, that's the end of the problem. So. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu.